security expert, Will Geddes, uh, who's on the line. Hello, Will. Hi, Kevin. Nice to join you. Thank you very much for doing so at short notice. Uh, what would you be doing right now? I think uh, what I need to ask you about is this potential terrorism connection. He's on terrorist charges, planting fake bombs at the MOD in Stafford. Uh, he denies those charges. But the worry here must surely be that this guy could be part of an international network that's organised this escape and then God knows what might happen. Uh, what would you be doing right now, Will? Well, I mean, Peter's made some very valid points, certainly as part of the investigation into his association to terrorism or collaboration or preparation for terrorism acts. The Security Services Counterterrorism Police would have looked at all the available network. Now, what we can't discount is that even though there may be individuals connected to him in terms of those previous charges that could be possibly under surveillance right now, they will be looking, obviously, there'll be a number of different cogs working right now to ensure that everybody is looking at who's changing their pattern of life, who is doing something different to what has been established so far. But we've also got to include within this whole network the new friends that he may have made in Wandsworth Nick. Now, we know that phones are smuggled into prison and they are used quite regularly. That phone may have been used in a preparation for this uh, as Peter put it, audacious escape for him to prepare, again, locations where he can hole up. And he may very well look at uh, a safe house, if you want to call it, that he may hole up temporarily until this initial heat begins to sort of subside before he moves on to his next location or staging point. But it's, it's the number of factors that are behind his incarceration in the first place, which is most concerning. And as to whether he will now advance knowing that he will be captured at some stage whether he may advance some kind of plot uh you mentioned then uh, uh will the audacious nature of this escape you know uh, he was working in the prison uh managed to get out of the kitchen uh hung him uh, clung on to the underside of a lorry like something out of a movie does that sound to you like a carefully planned escape that could have been organized uh, with associates or just an opportunist escape by a man with military experience yeah i would certainly say it was kev uh my my gut feeling on it is that he would have looked at again the pattern of life as i like to call it or we call it in our industry where we look at the routines in certain environments now one of the things that uh, that i've been involved in is attempting to uh make covert incursions into various critical sites those could be military bases it could be government buildings and trying to get in without detection now in reverse although we're looking at how we could undertake an attack against a site um, he will be looking at that kind of scenario in reverse so it's how can he get out of that site i don't think it was necessarily a spur of the moment opportunity because he would need to have looked at how he could conceal himself under the vehicle and this again is really concerning in terms of Wandsworth's protocol of any vehicles that are making deliveries or collecting certain items or, or are going to be moving in and out of the gate more often than not kept they get searched on the way in but they should be searched on the way out as well and that includes using under vehicle mirrors which would have obviously potentially detected him. Again, I don't know which vehicle it was and how he managed to secrete and hold himself underneath it. But I would say this was well planned. Uh, it does sound like that, doesn't it? We're just uh, getting breaking news that there are now uh, delays, that are familiar story of delays at airports. And this is specifically because the police are now flooding airports, uh, looking for this guy, Shalif, uh, of course, in case he uh, attempts to leave the country. Uh, stations are being uh, examined as well. Uh, you would be doing this if you're in charge of this operation, essentially sealing Britain to make sure this very dangerous man doesn't escape abroad. Yeah, absolutely. And again, depending on what criminal network he's established whilst he's been inside Wandsworth Prison, will obviously stretch out to the number of individuals that may provide favours. And, you know, as Peter was saying, it could be food, it could be clothing, it could be cash for him to affect that escape overseas. I think it would be highly likely that there are two scenarios that could play out here, Kev. One of which will be to get out of the country as quickly as he possibly can. And all port ports of entry and exit, airports, and everywhere else would have been notified, obviously, of this individual. 
Could he have managed to obtain a fake passport? Yes, possible. Uh, to get a very good uh, passport these days, a fake one with biometrics that would stand up to the rigorous uh, inspection at airports and ports of exit uh, would be usually very, very expensive. Obviously, I, I won't go into detail on that, but whether he managed it or has managed to achieve that or, as we know, with the number of individuals that are flooding across the channel right now, utilizing one of the smugglers capabilities one of the crafts that may be bringing in yeah. um if you like uh immigrants uh, illegal immigrants but also could be used to then return over to the continental uh parts of europe uh now i don't know this guy's life story uh daniel abed khalif but it sounds like he's certainly uh of a middle eastern extraction uh, i don't know whether he's fully british or uh, you know, has come over here to live. Uh, but he's also, he was in the British Army, so I guess he is, uh, you know, one of ours, as it were. Uh, what should we be especially worried about in terms of this guy? Because it, it, no matter how organised this escape may have been, an escaped prisoner is a desperate person. And this guy has military skills. What should we be especially worried about in terms of a former army man, Daniel Abid uh, Khalif? Well, it really depends on, on which branch in the military he was actually um, positioned within and what exposure to certain types of training. Now, some of the things that have been mentioned by your previous guests, such as escape and evasion, will only generally be provided to elite forces and special forces. So the, I don't believe there is a connection to special forces for this individual. However, he may have shared stories, garnished tactics, from some of his cohorts that may have been located or stationed with him at the particular barracks that he was at. What we do know is that uh, two of the particular crimes that he was incarcerated for, one, the Official Secrets Act being breached. Secondly, was a suspicious device threat, a suspect package device threat. Which, he, uh, which that, he did, I must point out, he, he's only charged with those offences. He denies yeah. them, but carry on, Will. No, of course, yeah. No, and of course, you know, he's only been charged with those. He hasn't actually been sentenced against them. But that would say to me that he has done a fair amount of research. And if he was looking to get out of the country, yes, I mean, as Peter says, it's it's not easy to do. But, you know, with a certain amount of support and help, which is what he would need, it can be done, Kev. Um, now, but uh, an army man... You know, hmm. a military man, uh, we can expect him, and, and the escape kind of indicates this, we can expect him to be pretty resourceful. Well, yes, I mean, to a degree, again, it really comes down to what unit he was in, Kev, to be honest. Um, it, it, you know, there are so many different branches within the military. Um, some are trained in all sorts of very clever tactics and skills and tradecraft. Others are trained in convention, conventional soldiering. So uh, until such time as we know a little bit more about his military history, and I, 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 it would be difficult for me to speculate, even speculate what he is capable of doing. But having said that, it isn't necessarily only from the military that he could have obtained or devised these various skills. He could have been provided these by individuals that he's associated to both outside of prison but also those that he's met since he's been in there on remand. Uh, well, you're just the man to talk to in this situation. Uh, could you bear with us? Because I just want to recap the whole situation for any viewers or listeners who are tuning in right now. We are covering uh, the dramatic story of Daniel Abed Khalif, who escaped this morning from uh, Wandsworth Prison in South London at 7.50am, an audacious escape. He was working in the prison kitchens, still had his prison uniform on, and evidently uh, the Sun newspaper has managed to find out that he got out of the kitchen and managed to attach himself to the underneath of a delivery truck which then promptly drove out of the prison like something out of the movie. Uh, there are delays at airports all over Britain because they are closing uh, the airports for security reasons in case this guy uh, tries to leave by air. Stations are being uh, flooded by cops everywhere. The ports as well. Uh, in case this guy tries to uh, leave the country and the police uh, were expecting a live statement from the police as soon as uh, it can be arranged. Fairly soon it should come up, but uh, what the police are saying, and this is very, very important, you can see him there, he's six foot two inch to, inches tall. Uh, they are saying if you see him, 
Do not, under any circumstances, approach him. Just phone the police on 999. This is a major national security alert. This man is a, a terrorist. Uh, he's a wanted terrorist. He's accused of terrorist offences that he denies, uh, planting fake bombs at an MOD establishment in Stafford. So uh, he's potentially a very dangerous man. Uh, Will, if I can come back to you now. Uh, I mentioned the ports there. Uh, so, yes, the police, uh, if you were in charge of this operation, you'd be flooding all the ports and all the airports and all the stations to make sure this guy can't get away, yes? Absolutely. I mean, that that's a standard operating procedure in these kinds of events where there is a criminal or a suspect that's on the run and there is obviously a great concern that they're going to flee the country, then that's the first thing that will be done. And they have very good systems in place to follow that notification to ensure that everybody's guard is up, uh, anybody checking passports, people in security checkpoints within the airports, which we've all probably been through during the summer uh, for our holidays, uh, will be extra diligent, extra vigilant, and be looking at, obviously, anybody that's coming through. And his image will have been, obviously, published across all these various different stations, which would say to me, Kevin, and again, just using common sense, it's highly unlikely he's going to use a conventional port of entry exit to leave the country. He's going to look at other options, but it is a very short stretch of water between the United Kingdom and continental Europe. So he may be looking at other alternatives using a small rib, you know, boat with an outboard, uh, whatever options he could potentially gain or, or get his hands on. Uh, let's talk a little bit, if we can, Will, about Wandsworth Prison. It's a Category A prison, uh, thought to be extremely secure. Uh, it was built in 1851. It is a notorious Victorian hellhole. Uh, the one place uh, crooks don't want to go is Wandsworth Jail. Uh, it's horrible to be in and very difficult to get out of, although Shalif seems to have achieved it. Uh, famous escapes uh, from Wandsworth. They have been few and far between, because it is, as I say, uh, a very secure prison, but not uh, today. And it wasn't when Ronnie Biggs escaped in 1965, famously yeah. scaling over the wall, the great train robber, uh, to uh, st escape justice for many decades. Uh, uh, other famous escapes, the Cray Twins in 1966, the, the notorious East End gangsters, they escaped by digging a tunnel through the prison walls. Uh, and uh, other... Uh, great train robbers also escape from there, but they have been very few and far between. But today, uh, the security of Wandsworth Jail has been penetrated again. What questions should we be asking of the bosses of Wandsworth Prison? What went wrong here? What will they be asking themselves? OK, well, I think it's highly likely there's going to be an independent security review that will be undertaken now. That that will be initiated uh, at the very soonest, Kev, because you've let, they've let one out of the, you know, through the net. Um, there could be others that were also planning potentially to make uh, their escapes, obviously, from Wandsworth Prison. So it's going to be looking at a number of things, the first of which will be who was in close pro proximity to this individual? Uh, who was regularly sort of uh, conversing with him, eating with him, uh, co going into his cell or him likewise going into their cell? Um, who was he communicating with? And then profiling each of those individuals to find out a little bit more about the sort of networks they may have outside. They'll have all their cells turned, no doubt, looking for any illegal contraband, and that could obviously be radios, could be phones, could be all sorts of means of communication. But over and beyond that, they'll want to look at how was someone within what is generally a soft part of the prison. And from my understanding, a lot of prisoners will have to have shown very good behavior and displayed trustworthy behavior to be able to be put into those kinds of facilities within the prison. But why were they able or why was he able to escape and how was he escaped and who assisted him in that escape now it could be uh, and again this is only guessing on my part kev it may be fellow prisoners yeah. it could be potentially prison officers we don't know at this stage okay. but it shouldn't be that easy uh, will uh, thank you so much for jumping in at short notice that was will geddes